So it's important when learning to grow any mushroom to understand the life cycle a bit. So what a mushroom is, is really the fruiting body of a fungus that's living in some kind of material that it's feeding on. Uh, so we can think about whether it's logs or straw or sawdust, that's food for the mycelium. That mycelium grows through its food and it fruits, and the fruit is the mushroom that we want to grow and, and consume or sell. Mycelium is this thread-like material. It's one cell wall thick. It looks like roots, but it's very different. It's a, it's a permeable cell wall that can grow through a material and, and bring in food for consumption and to, to generate energy. We have the fruity body of the mushroom, and what the mushroom does when it fruits is it sends out spores. Those spores in the natural world, if they land on a suitable food source, can germinate and grow and form a new bed of mycelium. When we cultivate mushrooms intentionally, what we do is we just skip that first phase and we mostly work with mycelium, which when you buy it from a spawn supplier is called spawn. So spawn is mycelium meant for cultivation. And we inoculate that spawn into different materials. We support that mycelium to grow through the material and then we support the conditions for it to fruit properly. So why grow oyster mushrooms? Oyster mushrooms provide a lot of different benefits that other mushrooms don't particularly get. Probably the two biggest things is that they're really fast growing and high yielding. So we can grow oyster mushrooms from start to finish in about three to four weeks, which is huge. You know, shiitakes usually take, uh, indoors take like 12, 14 weeks for the whole process, outdoors anywhere like three years. Because oysters are fast growing, it also allows them to grow on a lot of different substrates, anywhere from logs all the way up to supplemented sawdust. So there's a lot of uh, agricultural byproducts and forestry byproducts like uh, soybeans and cotton hulls and sunflower seed hulls and sawdust that can be used for growing oyster mushrooms. In the oyster family, there's a lot of different species. So there's like pink oysters, yellow oysters, blue oysters, gray oysters, phoenix oysters, that we can use the exact same methods to grow, but will result in these different colored or looking mushrooms. And it could be treatment methods like uh, steam, or it could be as easy as pasteurization or lime soap. When you go into the grocery store and look at the oyster mushrooms that are offered now, a lot of times they're hammered. They're totally broken up and don't look that good. So there's this, this opportunity for local growers to provide a higher quality mushroom than what people are used to seeing. So right now, uh, small and medium sized farms can really take advantage of mushroom production as a niche crop. It's getting a really good price in the markets and chefs and consumers alike are both valuing its high quality. Uh, which you can provide as a local producer, uh, which a lot of the larger distributors have a harder time maintaining. So quality is really important, consistent supply is important, and so if you're interested in selling mushrooms, you're really going to focus on uh, your efficiency and harvesting your mushrooms at the right time and getting them to market so that they, they look great and they taste great.